Shrimp scampi. Barbecued shrimp. Mm. Shrimp tacos. Uh, shrimp salad. Uh, a shrimp and pasta. I probably won't make a shrimp salad. Oh, shrimp pasta would be good. Mm -hmm. um, cocktail shrimp. What type of shrimp is this? For the Puget Sound, we are in the Puget Sound area. There is spot shrimp in these waters. And there's a very limited season for spot shrimp. And I have no idea what I'm doing. So what do people do? When they don't know what they're doing, they go to a seminar for it. So we're headed <laughs> to a spot shrimp seminar to learn how to shrimp. Huh. Uh, and then hopefully we can cook all those delicious meals. Mmm, mmm, that's a very good. So hopefully we can learn something. It's John from John Sporting Goods. He tends to know pretty much everything, how to fish for everything in this area. He's the speaker, so uh, we'll run to his shop after the seminar and pick up some gear. Can we go make some barbecued shrimp? So you're guaranteeing me shrimp. So they say if we do this right, the setup right, guaranteed your limit on shrimp. So I don't make any guarantees because I have no idea what I'm doing. So if I get five shrimp, at least I got a cocktail. I uh, I'm way more expensive than five shrimp. I'm gonna need at least a hundred shrimp. Well, the ocean called. They're running out of shrimp. I know, cause I ate it all. All right, let's go to the seminar. So we learned a lot at the shrimping seminar, including all the equipment we need, how to rig up your pot is one of the most vital things, and this little graphic shows exactly how we're gonna do it when we head out to shrimp. First of all, rigging up our buoys is, we need six to 10 feet of rope between our buoys, and of course those yellow buoys are required to shrimp in Washington State. And we want the 5 16 quick link ovals to connect our rope between our buoys and our pot. We're going to be shrimping in about 250 to 300 feet of water, so we want 400 feet of the lead rope to make sure that we have plenty of slack. Our shrimp pot needs to weigh at least 30 pounds. Now if you get one of the lighter ones, you need to add some weight as needed so it won't be bouncing or dragging or vibrating on the bottom to scare the shrimp away. Now you can add a one and a half pound folding anchor to give the shrimp pot some extra security to stay in place. This will keep the pot from drifting or bouncing around. Now let's head to the store and grab some gear. Hey John, uh, I just came from your shrimping seminar and I've never done it before. So I need to get a complete setup uh, to go out for my first time. So I was wondering if you can help me figure out what I need. Okay, Sean, I know your first question after the seminar is, Tell me about the two different basic types of pots. We got the wire pots like this made by SMI. This is the octagon pot with four entrances, large bait containers that will allow you to put in bait tubes in there, two of them. And what's nice about this is that it's very durable. So there's not gonna be any repair on this over the years. This will last literally forever. So that's one advantage to this. They do, you do need to add 15 pounds of weight to this pot because this pot only weighs about 14 pounds. So these look a lot different. What's, what's the difference of these ones? What's nice about rigging these, Sean, is that this pot already weighs 28 pounds. You don't have to add any weight to it. And this is a dome-shaped pot right here. And it one will catch shrimp as good as the other versus the wire type traps. Notice that these entrances are smaller, doesn't seem to make any difference. And the opening for this, it's kind of like a purse, it's underneath here. So you open everything from underneath and you hang a bait barrel from the top of this. This is a great idea for if you have a smaller boat and you want to stack these in your boat and not compromise the space that you have to work with. Now this buoy right here is for when you're going into high current areas. Let's say you're just gonna go shrimping in Puget Sound. There's an alternative that's less expensive and not quite as bulky. Let's let us explore that for a second. These are the super jumbo buoys here. Um, these will float about 12 pounds. And what I usually recommend is just putting two of these back to back. And this is all you need for shrimping in Puget Sound. You would add these one of these buoys plus this buoy for going out in the Straits of Juan de Fuca or going into the San Juan Islands, you'd double up to make sure you don't lose your your pot and rope and the, all your equipment. And then this is a heavy-duty shrimp harness right here. 
This will last a lifetime. Bait barrel, these come in several sizes. This is the standard size that goes in the wire trap. The next size bigger than this will go in the dome size pots that we talked about. And then 400 feet, a quarter or 5 16 leaded rope. Um, you're generally going to be shrimping in 300 feet of water, so you want 50 to 100 feet extra in case your pot slides a little bit, you won't lose it. So from what I've read online and from your seminar, people can have all sorts of different recipes for bait. What's worked for you? Here's a, here's a recommendation that's guaranteed to catch your limit if you mix your bait properly and put your shrimp pot in the right spot, because this works all the time. This is what I use. Four cans of Friskies Ocean White Fish with tuna, chub mackerel, and Procure oil, and super bait prawn bait. Now here's how it goes. In a five gallon bucket, pour four cans of the cat food, four cans of the mackerel, six pounds of pellets, and approximately two cups of oil. And put that all in the bucket. You can either stir it by hand or you can use a five gallon paint mixer on electric drill and you can mix all that up. Now you do this the night before you go shrimping. If you do it the day you go shrimping, none of these, these pellets won't absorb any of these oils and you'll just be throwing the oils overboard. And the whole idea about getting shrimp to come to your shrimp pot is for these pellets to be releasing these oils into the water stream and bringing the shrimp into your pot. Okay, looks like I have everything I need to go shrimping. My last question is, where should I go? Sean, got the answer for you right here in the Saltwater Fishing Journal in which I'm the author. Uh, there's a collection of shrimping maps in here, fishing maps for halibut and salmon and lingcod and crabbing. So everything you need is in here, including everything we talked about today. There's a, there's a nice description on how to rig this whole setup. So if you forget some of the items we talked about today, you can look it back up in this book. All right, thanks for all your help as a beginner. catch some fucking shrimp. Make sure to hit subscribe so you can catch the next episode where we test out our shrimping gear. Follow us on Instagram at Bucking Outdoors and press like on Facebook so you can catch all the Bucking Outdoors adventures.